welcome to our service today. I invite you to stand as we sing, join the all with one accord, hymn number 525 in our hymn book. our service today, this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Some of the announcements that I have for you, I remind you that to pre-order the uh, 2022 daily text, which is so hard to believe, the forms will be in the vestibule, and please, if you want to order those, we need to get your order in now, so we will be able to get those and have those for you when 2022 comes around the corner. So, Please take care of that. Uh, I do remind you uh, that we're doing the 6th Annual Parade of Cans and um, the food drive. You'll find an insert on the back of the tidbits of truth, and it gives you some items that we are in need of and in supporting um, those in our community, so in the needs that they have. So please do participate in this. It's very important. I think that all the other announcements that we've had have uh, come out via email, um, and of course it won't be long till you'll be getting your newsletter, so they will have all the extra information that you would need. Um, I do, um, as we move into our times of prayer, I do want to thank you for all the prayers uh, that you prayed for me um, and during my uh, heart catheterization. Uh, everything went very well, and um, they were pleased. I did have a lot of trouble with my arm um, because they had trouble getting in through my arm, but all went well, and so I am pleased, and I can, I got it going now, so, you know, I'm good for the punch. So, uh, but um, thank you, thank you for your prayers. They have been much appreciated, and I have felt them. We do also want to be praying for... Uh, Mary, who is Carolyn's mother, she had a little episode. She's 97, and her health has been declining, and so uh, Carolyn's asked that we pray for her. Um, we, you know, 97, she's still doing, and, and of course, all the girls are taking such wonderful care of her. She's very blessed to have them. Also, uh, we pray for Phyllis and the loss of her brother, Leon, uh, and I ask that you pray for the family um, during this time um, as they struggle with the loss of a brother, you know. Um, so um, please, he was from Durham, and um, his service will be later in the week. I do, um, I want to say welcome to those that haven't been here in a while, and uh, 
and I have to call out, especially Faye, and Faye, I hope you're not embarrassed, but Faye had several health issues, and I mean, and when I saw her, I was just like, oh, I'm so excited because uh, she was able to drive and to be able to be here. So, so we're so glad that you're back with us today. And the others with us that are here, yes, we are so excited to see. If you haven't been here in a while, I won't make you stand up, but believe me, I noticed, I noticed, used to the pastors would say, if somebody's not there, you're going to miss them. And I'm like, how in the world am I going to miss somebody that's out there? Of course, you've kind of changed seats on me a little bit here. You know, uh, with the separation and the distance we've got, you, the seating's kind of changed. You know, like, Anita's over here today. She might be over here today. So, but that's fine. I'll find you. I'll find you. And, uh, and Melissa's so good about helping me uh, take care and, and keep tabs on that. But just thank you for those that haven't been here in a while and you're here. Uh, welcome. We are so glad. It just... Just like the whole back area back there just looks so good to see those of you back there, you know, because that was empty for so long. So it's wonderful. Uh, thank you, thank you for being here. Um, we do want to uh, also lift up Brandon Collins. He is a friend of Faye's, and he, his health has been declining. And he's a young man, and he's having quite a few. Uh, and uh, Faye was just telling me that he had been rushed to have extra care. Um, so it's one of the things that we just never know. Um, age doesn't, it's not always the factor in people's health conditions and things. Also want to lift up Tom uh, Schultz and his family and his mother whose health has been declining. And, um, you know, it just seems to kind of go, it's a kind of a downhill spiral when, when as people age and the extra care that they need. So please do be with them during this time too. Um, Susan, she is recovering. She had hand surgery, and she is doing very good. And um, so we do continue to lift her up, and um, she's very happy with the progress that she's making during this time. Please do look over our prayer list and those concerns that we have. What a privilege it, ha it is for us to be able to pray for those that are in our community and those who have need. So please do continue to pray for them. Um, is there any other prayer concerns that someone might have? Okay. Yes. Yes. You are welcome. And of course, Melissa's uh, sister, Lucetta. So many people on our list. Uh, just please do remember them. And um, we also remember um, Dan Greaser's brother-in-law, Steve, and his sister, Rachel. So please do uh, look at our prayer. These prayer concerns aren't just listed here to fill up the page. They're listed here because they're important. And we do continue to pray for Cuba and the continued conflict and strife and outbreak. Um, we do pray for our country right now and, and the things that are happening with this new uh, mutation of the Delta virus that uh, has uh, started to affect many people now. So we continue to pray for those affected by COVID. And um, I just ask and pray that you will be safe and keep yourself safe. If you feel that you want to wear a mask while you're here at church, that's optional, and please feel free to do so. So, Let us go to the Lord in prayer. We'll have a time of quietness, and then I will close our prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we are so grateful that we can come to you. And Lord, we need not come to you in fear and trembling. We come in boldness requesting help and care and your attention to those in need. We pray for healing, if it be your will. 
We pray for those who have lost loved ones that you might surround them and comfort them. We pray for those who have conflict and loss of lives and tension in daily life. We pray for those that have had surgery and the healing and how you have cared for them. May you continue to do so. Lord, you know the needs of your people because you neither sleep nor slumber. You're always aware of everything that's going on in our lives. Lord, we thank you that you are a God who cares. You are a God that draws close to us. And you heed our call to you for help. You heed the prayers that are lifted up for those in need. We thank you, Lord, that you are a God of abundance, a God of mercy, and a God of grace. And your compassion to your people shows forth in the way that you care for us. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that we can draw near to you. We lift up those that we prayed silently, all of those on our prayer list. And Lord, we lift up those that we may have not spoken or thought of today that are in desperate need of your prayers. Lord, we pray that our service today would bring praise and honor to your holy name. For Lord, you alone are worthy to be praised. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Well, we have August birthdays. And our August birthdays are Catherine Wiles, Jane Bumgarner, Adeline Hildebrand, Pam Favette, and Shannon McDonald. So let us sing our birthday hymn, hymn number 447. <laughs> together our liturgy for peace and justice found on page 148. How should we come before the Holy One and bow before God on high? For you are good. 
Who can utter your mighty works or show forth all your praise? Blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Is not this the kind of worship that pleases me, says our God, to undo the bonds of injustice, to let the oppressed go free and break every yoke, to share bread with the hungry and shelter the homeless poor, to clothe the naked and not turn from their your own people? I was hungry, and you fed me, thirsty, and you gave me drink, a stranger, and you welcomed me, naked, and you clothed me, sick or in prison, and you visited me. Truly I say to you, when you did it to one of the least of these, you did it for me. the yoke, the clenched fists, the wicked word, if you give your bread to the hungry and relief to the oppressed, then your light will rise like the dawn. Your goodness will go before you and the glory of God behind you. As we consider these things, let us confess our sins in silence. The peace of Christ be with you. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Jesus said, You have heard it said, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that you are angry with your neighbor, you will be liable to judgment. You have heard it said, An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist an evildoer. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. 
You have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Praise God, all you nations. Praise God, all you people. Put not your trust in rulers and mortals in whom there is no help. There will be one who will rule with integrity and govern with justice, one who will like a shelter from the wind and a place to hide from the storm, one who will be like streams flowing in a desert, like the shadow of a giant rock in a barren land, one whose eyes and ears will be open to the needs of the people. Our God says, There is my servant who is my strength, the one I have chosen who will do my activities. I have filled him with my spirit, and he will bring justice in every nation. He will not lose love or courage, he will establish justice. He will teach us what he wants us to do. We will walk in the past the he will settle disputes among the nations. He will arbitrate for many peoples. Nation will not lift up sword against nation. Neither will they learn war anymore. We will live in peace and no one will make us afraid. Justice will roll down like waters, and the effect of righteousness will be peace, and the result of righteousness will be quietness and trust forever, and we will abide in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. We will live in peace, and no one will make us God has shown us what is good and what is required. To do justice, to show constant love, and to walk humbly with our God. As you entered worship, you had the opportunity to give of your tithes and offerings. I thank you for all of your support during the time of COVID and all throughout the year, how you have supported New Hope. Now, I ask that we would have a moment of prayer and then um, we will have a um, beautiful soloist that will sing. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and almighty God, you are the giver of all good gifts. All things belong to you. 
You call us to be good stewards with the things that you have given to each of us. We cannot outgive you, Lord. We can never outgive you because you continue to fill our basket with plenty. So, Lord, I pray now that we will give from our hearts and that we will use what is given for the ministries of this church and the outreach within our community. And may it all bring praise and glory to your holy name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Let us now continue our service with reading of God's holy word. Our scripture text today comes from Exodus 16, 2 through 4, 9 through 15, Psalm 78, 23 through 39, Ephesians 4, 1 through 16, and the Gospel of John, John 6, 24 through 35. Hear now the word of God. First reading is from Exodus 16, 2 through 4. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. The second reading is from Exodus 16, 9 through 15. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining." And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, Quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Next reading is Psalm 78, 23 through 39. Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down on them manna to eat and gave them the grain of heaven. Mortals ate of the bread of angels. He sent them food in abundance. He called the east wind to blow in the heavens, and by his power he led out the south wind. He rained flesh upon them like dust winged birds like the sand of the seas. He let them fall with their, within their camp, all around their dwellings, and they ate and were filled, for he gave them what they craved. But before they had satisfied their craving, while the food was still in their mouths, <coughs> the anger of God rose against them, and he killed the strongest of them, and laid low the flower of Israel. In spite of all this, they still sinned, they did not believe in his wonders. So he made their days vanish like a breath, and their years in terror. When he killed them, they sought for him. They repented and sought God earnestly. They remembered that God was their rock, the most high God, their redeemer. But they flattered him with their mouths. They lied to him with their tongues. Their heart was not steadfast toward him. They were not true to his covenant. Yet he, being compassionate, forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. Often he restrained his anger and did not stir up all his wrath. He remembered but they were, that they were but flesh, a wind that passes and does not come again. The last reading is Ephesians 4, 1 through 16. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one <coughs> baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. 
Therefore it is said, when, we, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth of love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. I would ask that you please stand for the gospel reading today. The Gospel of John 6, 24 through 35. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boat and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me. Not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has sent his, set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered, This is the work of God, that you believe in him, and him who sent me. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gave you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. For they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. May God bless the reading of his holy word today, and may he give to each one of us clear understanding. Please be seated. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bread of life. You alone satisfy our deepest hunger and longings in our hearts. Lord, may we always hunger for you, the bread of life, the imperishable bread that satisfies us like no other. You nourish and strengthen us. You fill us with joy and generosity and zeal for the days of our life as we serve you. We pray, Lord, that you would keep our hearts manifest and unwavering as we stand firm in our faith. Lord, let us be filled to overflowing with your abounding grace, with your mercy, and with your compassion. Let us work toward helping those that are struggling with injustice. Let us seek peace and justice in our country and in our world. Lord, we pray today that our service would be pleasing to you, 
Lord, I pray that you would fill my mouth with your words. I will step aside. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. When we are generous with God in giving and taking care of God's people, God will take care of us. Many times he takes care of us anyway. And time goes past and it just keeps going and going. And we would continue to say that we will do things for God. And yet we continue to do and serve more of the things that would be for ourselves personally. In London, there was a man in the hospital, and he wanted to speak with a priest. He told the nurse, please call a priest. I need to speak with him. She called the chaplain, but he was absent. She called, the par she called parish after parish. And further and further, she was getting away from the hospital until she finally got a priest that agreed that he would come to speak to the man. We have a man here who needs to see a priest. Can you come and see him? Yes, he said, I will come. Well, when the priest gets to, he gathers up his uh, oils, he gathers up the sacraments, and he gets on the subway, and he's going to the hospital. He anoints the man, and he shares the sacraments with the man. And this encourages the man, and it also comforts the man. As the priest was about to leave, the patient said, Father, can I give you something for all your troubles? No, I want to do something to help you, the priest said. The priest said, I am trying to... Um, the man says, I want to do something for you. And the priest says, the sacraments are free. He says, but Father, I want to do something for you. You have done something and comforted me. The priest said, well, I am trying to raise money to buy a furnace for our church. And it's so much easier to raise money for stained glass windows than it is for a furnace. If you want to make a donation, he said, you can. He said, I would be glad to make a donation. And he said, the priest says, well, we will accept it. So the man paid for the furnace. Then he paid for the renovation of the whole sanctuary. Then he put a new roof on the church. And he then paid the church parking lot. Then he asked the priest what else they might need. And the priest said, you have been so generous and generous to our church. And he said, we are so thankful. And he said, your heart has been generously opened to help God's people. God wants us to have a generous heart. And God has given you a generous heart, he told the man. God takes care of God's people. God takes care of the sick and the poor and the suffering. God also calls us to take care of those people. It's not just somebody else's responsibility. He calls us to do that. He calls us to be generous with other people. In our gospel today, Jesus takes care of God's people. And he makes claim that only our sovereign Lord can do. That only God could make. I am the bread of life. Think about that. These people had not heard that before. And Jesus is bold. And he's speaking out. And he's saying, I am the bread of life. Come to me. The bread of life offers eternal life. 
Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall not thirst. Jesus spoke these words to his disciples. He spoke those words to the people that were following him. And he speaks those people, those words to us today. Come to him. You will not hunger and you will not thirst. When you're weary, when all joy has been taken, when things are bothering you, you're troubled, come to me and I will give you comfort. And I will fill you up with a bread that's not like the bread that's around and spread. There's all kinds of bread. Have you ever noticed that? Just go to the bread section and look. I mean, from rye to pumpernickel to white to whole wheat to taco, the, the little tortilla things, the bagels, the you name it, there's a lot of bread. But that bread does not fill us like the bread of life. The bread of life gives us eternal life. When we eat earthly bread, it fills our stomachs. And we're filled. This is what was going on with the people. The people were coming. Think about it. They were coming to follow Jesus because everywhere they went, it seemed like Jesus was feeding these people. So their bellies were hungry and they were going to eat. And this made me think, you know, a lot of the social events that we have kind of filter around food. If we have food or we have a dinner or things, a lot of people show up. We're going to eat. Our bellies are going to be full. But that's not the same kind of food. Jesus is talking about a spiritual food, eternal food, the bread of life. Think about that. I think sometimes we don't really think about the bread of life. And the bread of life gives us eternal life. It speaks hope to us. And we can have confidence in believing in our faith that God will do what he says he will do. And we can stand on his promises. So important. So important. You know, many people begin to eat, they actually eat stale bread because they're really not partaking of spiritual bread. Their life becomes more involved with worldliness and not spiritual things, and there's a difference. When you thirst and hunger for the things of God, the spiritual things, your life begins to be filled up and you are overflowing with generosity for others. You care for others. You love others. It's not just all focused on you. You know, you may have noticed we seem to live in a society that's all about me. Me, myself, and I. I laugh, and maybe some of y'all do this, I don't know. Taking the selfies everywhere you go. I mean, people have fallen off the side of a mountain trying to take a selfie. Trying to do things to... It's not about me. You know, I've told you many times, it's not about what I call Bettyism. It's about God. And his, the way that he is in life. And he is the bread of life. The living bread. And so, you know, it's like when we are hungry, what do we go for? What do we try to seek? Do we try to fill ourselves up with all the things of the world? With all the things that are stuffed, that we can stuff into our homes? And all the things that are around us? Or do we fill ourselves up with God? Something we need to think about. What are you filling up with? What kind of bread are you partaking of? Are you partaking of eternal bread? The bread of life? 
Is that important to you? So important. If we're hungry for the Lord, we should be telling the Lord, Lord, multiply the ministries that we do. Multiply the things in my life that I can do to help others. Let me not close my eyes to those who are hungry and poor and in need. Let me be Jesus to them. Let me reach out to them. Let me love them. Jesus says, whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. I don't think we can hear those words enough. 